let me hit play. That's fair. Let me hit play. Um, all right. Uh, well, this is Hannah David. Uh, I hope it's a good lesson. <laughs> okay, good. Um, so she was a student in my class last spring. Uh, around this time, which is a terrible time for me to teach, uh, because I get hungry, and I probably complained uh, numerous times about that. But even with all the lack of uh, ability to function as a human being to teach them, uh, Hannah has made a marvelous project, and she's going to present it here today. <laughs> okay, so I'm Hannah Davis. Um, I actually graduated from JSU last spring, um, and this was my final project to finish up my internship at JSU. So I had an internship with the JSU baseball team, and um, with that, I sat in for 30 home games and uh, collected data. And so, well, I've got to do something with the data. Um, and so I did this. Um, so originally I wrote a research paper, and so um, I had my purpose and hypothesis, which I'll explain, did the research, I did analysis, which was required of me, and then I went ahead and did some further analysis for the coaches, and then we'll get to the conclusions when we get there. So my purpose, um, I wanted to see if there was a pitcher on JSU's 2022 uh, baseball team that had a significantly faster fastball than the team's average. Um, and then for further analysis, I wanted to test the sensitivity of my ANOVA, which is the model that I used in R, um, as well as create visualizations of the pitch distributions for each pitcher. This was more useful for the coaches so that they could see how the pitchers were doing um, and not just look at all of the numbers. That's what statisticians do, right? Make things visual. Um, and so in order to do anything, I needed to make sure that I was uh, well-versed in everything baseball. Um, so why a fastball? So a pitcher can have um, any number of types of pitches. So these are just a few examples. There are more that aren't often used. But um, there's the fastball, there's four seam and two seam, curveball, slider, and the changeup. The fastball is the pitch that every pitcher has. But curveball, slider, changeup, those are your breaking ball and your, um, your off-speed pitches. And while some pitchers may have a curveball and a slider, they may not have a changeup. So as far as data collecting goes, I could get more points with getting a fastball. And for me, um, I wasn't really into baseball. Well, I mean, I enjoyed baseball. But I didn't know everything there was to know about baseball before I did this internship. Um, and so I'll show you on the next slide. Since I was the one collecting the data, I needed to make sure that what I was collecting was accurate. So in this screen. This is what I saw. Um, I had a little iPad that I sat with and uh, there was a camera that collected all of this data. And so for every single pitch, um, they would spit out some numbers like we see on this right hand side. And I would primarily look at the pitch speed. The fastball is the fastest pitch that a pitcher throws. Um, and it's usually the most recognizable as far as how it travels and then um, just the outcome of it. So I had to look at the number and based on what I knew about our pitchers, declare that it was a fastball. So I was the one to saying that it was a fastball. I wanted to make sure it was accurate. Since this is the easiest pitch to get, I chose the fastball. Um, and so with that, we got uh, 1,431 observations, which is plenty enough for what we needed to do. Um, I say we, it's just me. And then I created a list in Excel of each observation. I had the pitchers' names, which I did not include here. Um, but I made an index for each of those names. So if it was John Smith, I named him one. And then if it was Billy Joe, named him two. And so in R, which is the coding language that we use in Dr. Cleveland's class, um, I created an ANOVA model. And with this model, um, I wanted to estimate the mean of the team's average for their fastball, their fastball velocity. So I used that with a normal distribution, which I'll show a visual of that. Um, in a couple of slides over. Uh, but I used a normal distribution because I figured that most of the people on the team would have that uh, average around the team's average, right? There's no skew going. Um, <clears throat> and with that, um, I assumed that the team had an average, a fastball velocity average of 88 miles per hour, um, the standard deviation of 1.5, that gave us somewhere more in between 83.5 miles per hour and 92. 0.5 miles per hour between, they fell between those, um, those means. And so this is a visual of the original priors that I gave R. So as you can see, the taller the bars are, uh, that shows where the most, um, how many pitches were pitched at that velocity. Um, but these are just the priors, so not the actual data. Um, but it's mainly centered around the 88 mile per hour. 
I also initially assumed that all pitchers had a fastball velocity average that is within three miles per hour to the team's average fastball velocity. So I didn't have a ton of outliers um, when it came to the pitchers on JSU's team. And this is the visual of that. Um, so this is variance, and variance is interesting when it comes to units. But uh, most of my most of the pitchers I assumed uh, worked. Like I said, they weren't outliers, um, and that's what this graph is showing here. Um, and so I also created a regional practical equivalence, which we lovingly called in Dr. Cleveland's class the rope. Um, and so these were the estimates that were given to me by the JSU pitching coach who I worked with. Uh, so we wanted to figure out what was equivalent to 88 miles per hour because not every pitcher is going to throw 88 miles per hour every single time. Um, so we gave that range as 87, between 87 miles per hour and 92 miles per hour. Um, the reason why it was not centered is because um, when you are pitching, you don't want to go too far below what your average is, but it's okay if you go above. Because if you're going below, that means you're either tired or you're injured or something like that. So we didn't want to go too low. Um, and then the variance for each pitcher should uh, be around four mile, between four miles per hour, centered around their average fastball. So we didn't want um, the variance is talking about the spread. So we didn't want the pitchers to be throwing a ton of wild balls that weren't consistent, right? We want them to be accurate. Um, and so in R, we created, I created this uh, chart here. And so what this shows, um, so I have all of my pictures and their index and the fastball velocity. And then the red lines are the ropes, the regional and practical equivalents. And then each of these um, circles and lines here, the circle is the estimated mean of my pitcher. And then the lines are the regions of uncertainty. So some of them you'll notice have a wider line. Some of them have a narrow line. The wider line means that there's more uncertainty there. Um, I didn't have as many data points for that pitcher. The narrower lines, like especially for pitcher, I believe that's eight, I'm looking at it from a weird angle, um, had a very narrow region of uncertainty. Um, we had a lot of data points for them. Um, so some things to note about this is that seven had a lower fastball average, which that was something that we pointed out to the coach, I pointed out to the coaches. And then to answer the question of who had the highest average, pitcher nine by far had the highest uh, fastball velocity average. And then uh, pitchers eight, nine, and 12 were starting pitchers. So um, just some other things that we could note from this because we had already answered the question and I wanted to see, well, what else can we get from this? Um, so eight, nine, and 12, if you notice that they are on the higher end of the graph, um, they are starting pitchers. And so with starting pitchers, you wanted to have um, Usually, not all the time, but usually you wanted to have a good fastball speed coming right off the bat. Um, so that aligned with the game strategy that the coaches did, or coaches had. And then for the variance, um, the abundance of data overrode the priors. Uh, so we had pitchers 1, 6, and 12. They had a significant amount of variance from their average fastball velocity. So um, the more right they go, the more variance they have, the more spread their data is they have. Um, a wider range of uh, velocities there. And then some other things that we could note, uh, 5, 8, 11, and 12, all those pitchers were starting pitchers. And if we notice that all of those are within the regional, the region of practical equivalence, um, and so they had more consistent pitches there. While pitchers 1, 6, 7, 9, and 14 are relief pitchers. Relief pitchers are pitchers that come in in the middle of a game um, after the starting pitcher has pitched a few innings. Um, and they either are used to relieve the starting pitcher or to um, swing the game whichever way the coaches want them to. Um, they had more variance, but that's okay. Um, that can be used in gameplay. And also those pitchers, um, starting pitchers usually have more stamina and can last a long time and have more consistent results. Relief pitchers don't necessarily have to have that. Um, and then at the time, I noted that pitcher 12 was within that uh, rope, the regional practical equivalence, and he was working to become a regular starting pitcher. I'm unsure of where he is at now as far as um, his on the pitching lineup for this year's baseball team. Um, and then my further analysis, I tested the sensitivity of the ANOVA. So instead of giving uh, the, the code, the coding language, what I put in the R, um, an initial assumption that the team's average was 88 miles per hour. Um, I gave it a low estimate, so 84 miles per hour, and then a tighter uh, frame with one standard deviation. 
And then I also tested it um, if I assume a little bit higher, assume the team had an uh, average of 90 miles per hour and had a wider range. As you can see by the charts, there really was not much of a difference. So my ANOVA was not sensitive to changing the priors. And then, and then more further analysis, uh, and this was useful for the coaches, um, I found out the mean for each individual pitcher um, and then figured out what would be the lowest acceptable pitch that they could throw and then the highest probable pitch that they would throw. So um, we wanted the pitchers to be consistent um, with a certain percentage in throwing uh, their fastball pitches. So um, our graphs here. So pitcher eight is a starting pitcher on JSU's team um, as of last year. Pitcher one was a relief pitcher, and as you can see, the starting pitchers, like we saw earlier, they're more consistent in uh, throwing within their range. So um, 96.8 of his pitches were in his range. And then um, pitcher one uh, was a relief pitcher, also a sidearm pitcher, which brings some interesting things in. 82.9% um, of his pitches were in the range. And then just as another example, um, 11 was also, pitcher 11 was also a starting pitcher and had a higher percentage of pitches in or above his range. And then the relief pitcher um, had a little bit lower. But this was the pitcher that was trying to become the starting pitcher, so his percentage was higher than the previous one, but only by a little bit. So in conclusion, um, pitcher's nine fastball average, like we saw, was well above the team's average and equivalent range. Um, further research could be done on the mean and variance of each pitcher's uh, breaking or uh, off-speed pitches, so the curveball, slider, and changeup pitches. But that is for someone else to do at a later time. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, uh, sure. I'll, I'll throw you an easy one. Uh, when you're saying we, you just meant the royal we, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, I had a ton of help from Dr. Cleveland with oh. the coding. So, well, yes. See, I, was, I was telling you, you should say your royal we. <laughs> That's the second baseball pun I've heard unintentionally. You said right off the bat, and he said, "I'm going to throw you an easy one." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> on, on your R, I, I know of R, but I haven't programmed in R. You did your ANOVAs. Does R let you do some postdoc tests like Fisher's LSD or Tukey's uh, comparison? That would be a question we, for Dr. Cleveland. We, we did, but you could, yes. Okay. Yeah. I guess I guess what I was thinking was you had the pitchers already defined as like starting pitchers and relief pitchers and go ahead and block by that. That was such that a kind of that may, may be interesting to see some differences in those. Yeah. I was going to say, that's that's more you. You would have had to hard code that, because I didn't. Yeah, I yeah. Knew. Oh. That, that was more her, her, her than mine. <laughs> yeah. What's a breaking ball? <laughs> so a breaking ball is, so, okay. And I'm not I'm not a baseball expert. My fiance is, and so it would be awesome if he was here, he could explain it well. Um, so a fastball is one that, uh, let me just go back to the visual that I had. Um, if you look at the bottom here, so the fastball is going pretty much straight towards uh, the home plate. These breaking balls here, these two would be breaking balls. This is an off-speed pitch. Um, but the breaking balls, the goal is that like when they throw it, at the last second, it changes. And so it breaks from its original line of path, or line of travel, sorry. Other questions for our students? All right, let's thank her again.